Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, February 3rd, 2012. Our top story is from the world of chemistry. A team from the Department of Energy have, for the first time, analyzed gas hydrates on a molecular level. Also known by the far more awesome term burning ice, they're actually naturally occurring formations of gas and ice. Computer models were used to simulate the lattice structure of the gas hydrate, but until recently, didn't simulate the behavior of the gases. 20 to 24 water molecules form cage-like structures containing around 5 to 7 hydrogen molecules or 1 methane. The model showed that the hydrate could hold up to 10% hydrogen gas by mass, greater than the 5.5 that is the Department of Energy's goal for hydrogen storage. Unfortunately, however, it was found that the hydrogen would leak out, but this could be stopped by adding a little methane to hydrogen hydrates. This not only has applications in hydrogen storage, but empty lattices from methane extraction could be used to store carbon dioxide. And from the world of astrophysics, an American-Dutch collaboration has implemented another way to experimentally determine some constraints on dark matter. Through a phenomenon called gravitational lensing, they identified a satellite galaxy composed mostly of dark matter. Blobs of satellite galaxies containing dark matter and orbiting around more massive galaxies have already been discovered around our galaxy and our local group of around 50 galaxies. However, simulations with the current understanding of dark matter do not match certain observations for nearby galaxies. The simulations are instead consistent with this one galaxy located very far away. According to general relativity, light can be bent by very massive objects, like a galaxy. If another galaxy is situated behind this massive object from our perspective, the other galaxy will still be visible. The team is aiming to collect more data to check whether our current understanding of the distribution of dark matter in the universe matches the observations of these distant satellite dark matter galaxies. Possibly this might hint to a solution of the discrepancy with the predictions for nearby objects. We end with a quick update from the world of material science. Scientists at Bristol University have made the first soap sensitive to magnetic fields. They made this magnetic soap by dissolving iron into common surfactant materials, mostly chloride and bromide ions. This generated tiny soap particles with a metallic center, so they then tested its magnetic properties in a test tube, after which they took the soap to a lab in France to analyze the material in great detail using neutron scattering. Now, this all might not sound like a big deal, but the ability to manipulate the physical properties of a soap with a magnetic field has many applications. Just as an example, a magnetic surfactant could be used to help clean up an oil spill. After it done its job, a magnetic field could be used to extract the surfactant from the environment. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.